So I'm a real winner. <laughs> this is the second time I've done that. We took a three week break in December. Same thing. I'm like, this oh yeah, we have to do this all over again. <laughs> this stuff is hard, Heather. It's hard. It's hard. Oh my gosh. And I'm like geeking out, fangirling. I remember seeing you for the first time, the video summit. So was that a couple years ago? That was actually just last February. Yeah. I was like, it can't be last year. I mean, although that feels like for it was like a lifetime ago. Yeah. It was like a lifetime ago. Every once in a while, like we're getting up to that point where I'm looking forward to where Facebook just starts like letting you know where you were a year ago, those memories. Oh, I'm but that's gonna be to heartbreaking. I've know. already seen that because being a part of that socialite, like when I started getting all the swag and had to start doing all these videos and I start to see all that, and I'm like, at the end of the month, I don't yeah. I mean, I'll be happy, but I'll be sad at the same time. I think. I think we're all ready. We're, I think we're all ready to get back together, see our families, see our friends, get back into life. You know, the thing for me, I guess, is like that was that was sort of kicked it off for me, like speaking at R4. That was so much fun. And then uh, just weeks after that, we kind of descended into the the lockdowns and the world sort of changed. And, Had I known, uh, I probably would have yeah. not slept that week. <laughs> yeah, Had exactly. I known what right? was going to happen when we got back. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Like you just get caught up from being gone for a week and then everything shuts down. And I know like R4, like I'm excited, I'll be going, but you know, my office is just on the East coast of Florida. So it's, you know, oh, yeah. our drive, you know, we go to Orlando all the time, but for a lot of, I mean, there's so many Canadians that I look forward to seeing every year and just <laughs> globally, but they won't be able to go. And I'm also afraid as excited as I am to go. I think it will be sad because it's not going to be. It won't be the I'm same. I'm just going to want to hug yeah. everybody because that's my natural instinct when you see all these people that you talk with every, you know, all yeah. year long and you just go in for the hug or whatever. And now I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> bump, elbow bump. Like, well, last know. year, last year at last R4, for me, it was really special because I got to. Uh, meet some of the people that I'd only ever known digitally. So seeing them in person, just kind of, you know, really deep in the relationship. And my boy, Bob Tompkins uh, and I, we, you know, we hung out, we had a both, both an opportunity to speak at the vid summit. And then we just spent the next couple of days hanging out and, and having fun. And it, it was just kind of cool to watch Bob's journey, what he's been doing in the space. And then I come from a little bit different perspective. I'd say a lot different perspective. <laughs> But uh Ramsey's our troll, just so you know. Hey, what's up, Ramsey? How you doing there, handsome? I just listen, I just helped deal with the referral, Ramsey. So you'd be <laughs> you'd be good to me. He's so much fun. And yeah. I got to see you. I think I missed Bob's. I got the very tail end. I was so no, you didn't miss you didn't miss much. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But he's so he's so much fun in his videos, and I mean just it is a great group because it is people that you get to know. And then it's like when you finally, um, I mean, even Kristen Long, like I didn't realize we had never physically like met in person yeah. until this year. And we pretty much chat every single day. So nice. it's just deepens those relationships and being where you are, you probably aren't going to, to R4 or being able no. to hopefully, I mean, it'll be interesting with them do it virtually and, and stuff like that. But your videos, are amazing. And now I absolutely sure. love your family so much. <laughs> They're pure naturals, complete. I mean, I've always, I always used my, my kids. Now they're grown up and yep. probably don't want to do it that way. But my daughter was always a ham at every single event that we did. So I always use them, but oh my goodness, yours are phenomenal. So lead the way. Okay. Okay. So we're talking about video. That would be the only reason to have me on, right? <laughs> well, you're fun too. You're hey, cool. well, listen, um, I will say, so, I mean, I got started. Do you want to hear a little bit of background? I do. I, I loved okay. your story. That was really, really fun. Yeah. So I guess a little bit of my background is uh, I actually have a renovation and design company. That's what I was doing for many, many years. Um, about four years ago, I had... I had found that my business was sort of, it, it was struggling, like the Calgary economy where I, I am living 
has been really sort of down for about a decade now. And uh, we're about already even four years into a recession. So I started, you know, in real estate at a really tough time. My business had been going through a tough time. I slowed the business down. I thought, I'm finally going to take a chance on this real estate thing. I needed to get my GED to actually <laughs> qualify for being a real estate agent. Um, at the same time, it had like a tumor uh, in my cheek here. It was actually my parotid gland. And so I had a couple of things. I just felt like my life in my late 30s was starting to kind of unwind. I'm like, I'm losing control here. Like my business is struggling, all these different, I need to mix it up. And so it was a bit scary being like a sole income earner in the family to all of a sudden, I, you know, try a brand new career. And I, I realized that I just wanted something to, to differentiate myself, something to uh, be able to reach out to my sphere in a really organic way that sort of matched my own personality, which is I would never go and ask my friends for anything. Um, you know, like, I, and I think most of us wouldn't. But so I wanted to have something that I could kind of share that hopefully people would see, interact with, enjoy. And then if they were interested, they'd call me. And so it was a bit of uh, this desire to kind of create that unicorn real estate business where people call you to work with them versus you cold calling and door knocking and just feeling like you're in that continual sort of rotation of, okay, it's October, we're sending out pumpkin pie recipes, and then it's this month, and then it's this, and like always those sort of same things. And, and you know, I'd see a lot of times uh, people talking about their clients, uh, you know, like, oh, I worked with this person for two or three months, and then they just went into an open house and they bought with that agent. And I just thought, well, there's something so off about this industry. Like, the, you know, like when I was in renovations and design, like Mike, like I had real relationships with clients and, and they really liked me and they would never just, you know, midstream, just stop working with me and not feel that I was, you know, deserving of compensation for my efforts. Um, so I looked at it as an opportunity to try to find some way to extol this idea that we had value to bring the clients. And if we could bring more value than we took back, uh, which is, I think, sort of the flip side of what most people feel like the outside world feels about realtors, um, then maybe I would have unlocked the actual like key to success in this business. And so for me, that became using video as a way to help my clients actually meet their goals, which was to sell their home. And so because I'm in a market where there'd be 10 homes for sale, but maybe only five sold, I wanted to make sure that my clients' homes were one of those homes that actually sold. And so I needed to differentiate their home from everyone else. So uh, in an effort to really kind of build our own business on attraction, we started doing listing videos at you know a fairly high level uh, because you know we started uh, you know, teaching ourselves the stuff over YouTube and, um, you know, free tutorials, that kind of thing. Uh, I thought if we could do that, then, uh, my clients are going to win. And as like, you know, two degrees of separation. Oh yeah. By the way, it's that guy, Brad McCallum, that's doing the video thing. Uh, we should call him for our house too. So I was never trying to be the star of the show. I wanted the home to be the star and us just to be the supporting cast. I mean, and so you are not in video at all. I mean, prior to you starting video, because you're so natural. It just feels like you've been doing this <laughs> your entire life. I mean, and your yeah. entire family does. So, so you know what? I would say I my wife was a wedding photographer for many years. And during that time, she had used to have this like Canon 5D Mark II. So if you go back like 2008, 2009, 2010, my wife was during the summers shooting weddings and uh, I really was supporting her and her business. And sometimes I'd go out on weekends and, and help her for a couple of hours as a second shooter. So I'd be like, while the bride's getting ready with the <laughs> bridesmaids, I'd be out with the groomsmen catching like a few photos, like the tacky stuff, like adjusting his tie and that kind of stuff. But I enjoyed learning a little bit of like the camera settings and like the framing, but I was so business busy with my own business that I, I kind of just, apart from that was my only exposure. But then we had our first child. And when he was about eight months old, I realized that Tila's camera had a record button, a big red button on it, but it was weird because it looked like a normal photography camera, right? Like a body and a lens. So I didn't think it took video. And I was just like, I hit record and it recorded in 1080p HD, but with these like expensive lenses. And so I was just shocked by like the quality that I could get. And so I, we 
just, you know, when my son was learning to crawl, uh, I took a few videos of him just on the floor crawling. You can still find them deep in the archives of YouTube. Um, but uh, it's just him learning to crawl. And then we put like a little, uh, you know, folk song to it. And I just remember while I was editing and like learning how to edit, because I was watching YouTube videos on like, okay, how do I cut this scene here? And then how do I put a song to it? And I'm watching these little tutorials. And as we're editing and I'm watching this, this like 20 minutes of footage that we, that we shot, uh, like we were just in tears. Like we were just moved by the way the imagery and the music could stir a bit of an emotion. And so because of that, I had always thought, oh, this would be really cool. I'd love to do something creative uh, like this. But other than one or two videos for a season, I, I kind of got away from it. And when I got back into, when I got into real estate, I had uh, just started to get into actually watching YouTube and watching a couple of filmmakers, guys like Maddie Hipoya and Peter McKinnon, some different ones on YouTube. And I thought, oh, wow, they're doing such cool stuff. And I realized, I'm like, yeah, I should, I could do this. Like, I should do this for my homes. It was just like a, it was kind of like, I'm like, I, I want to offer something to the people who very early on were trusting me with their, with their, uh, with their home. So like, you know, I was two weeks license and I had a friend um, say, Hey Brad, like, will you list our $850,000 house? And I was like, I, I would like, it's a huge honor. This is an, this is like amazing stepping stone for me. So I took my wife's old camera out like eight years later, I dusted it off. I like, I, and I took a couple of shots and we put a little, listing video presentation. It went up online with the home, but the home sold in like an hour. I don't think anyone even ever saw the, saw the video of it. Um, <laughs> but my clients were messaging me a month after, two months after, three months after. We keep watching that video. It's just such an awesome memory for us to have. And I, I realized, okay, there's, there's this extra life that these videos get, right? And, and that's, I think, one thing that if you're thinking about getting into video... Um, and, or you're doing it on a certain level and you're trying to really quantify what is the return on investment for doing video. Uh, it can't be as simple as just did the video sell the property because, uh, you'll never get a clear answer to that. You know, I get people telling me, oh yeah, we watch your YouTube videos. Well, I don't know if they went to the MLS and saw the video link and then went on and started watching our videos or if they came from the YouTube videos and then found homes that we had for sale. Like, I have no idea how it always works. But what I do know is that the life of these va of these videos, um, it's it, the arc of them is is incredible because they increase in views over the years. They uh, once the home is sold, they continue to attract more clients to you. Um, they become part of a portfolio of your work. They build this impression that you're doing exciting, energetic, um, meaningful work, and they present you you as an authority in this space. And so long before I was an authority, I was getting some, you know, in within the industry, I was getting some good, uh, some good press where people were saying, Hey, like, uh, you know, Brad, can you speak at this event or speak on our podcast? And I was like, don't just, guys, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm not selling that many homes yet. Like just hold <laughs> off. <laughs> like, I, I think this works. I think it works and I've seen some like anecdotal evidence that it works, but I don't know a hundred percent that this is going to be like, that this is really worth it for everyone. And since then we ended up seeing that progression continually Every, month after month, more leads came in, more, more calls came in, uh, more builders and architects and designers and developers reach out to us now. And we're at the point where like last week, I sold a $2.7 million home to a YouTube viewer, unrepresented, who then went on to list his $1.2 million property to me that I put on Instagram. And I believe we have a buyer coming in in the next few days for that, also unrepresented. Like it is absolute, like the arc is crazy. Like, so like we went from starting doing videos and maybe selling 15 homes to then last year selling like 49 homes to this year already at 10 homes and $10 million in sales, which is just like nuts because I'm not the typical agent. I don't, I do terrible with my database. I do horrible with almost everything that an agent should do. 
<laughs> your yeah. personality and your family, it's, I mean, through your video, it is so much different than somebody doing a, a, you know, just a regular email, your videos, it just shows who you are. And I think you just attract people who want to work with you just for that reason right there. Well, I'll say this. I, I don't think there's anything necessarily that, well, I mean, I think my family's special. I love them to death, but I think everyone's family is special and I think everyone's story is but unique. Nobody knows the story or That's right. the family because they're not doing this sort of thing. And I love all your videos are kind of like a lifestyle. Uh, you just make it entertaining and fun to watch. So even if, you know, people are like, oh, only do a minute show or something, people will watch yours all the way through because it's, it's entertaining. It's factual. You have yeah. tons of, of goodies in there. And I know we have a, a bunch of, a couple of videos. Yeah. Uh, do you want to cool. show... Uh, which one do you want me to show first? Well, I think since we're talking about sort of the, the family side of things, let's show the one with our kids. I, I'm really proud of this video um, because the whole goal of this video was to get, was to bring some energy to it, right? We wanted some, some energy, some interest. This is, you know, a $400,000 apartment condo in our market. It's a beautiful home. It's very, very nice. Uh, but it's, you know, it's affordable, it's attainable, and not a lot of people put in this kind of effort at this price point. But for me, because, because it keeps our message really pure, doesn't matter what the price tag is, we, we want to always deliver our best. So I'm really proud of what we put together here. All right, let's play this. All right, guys, your mom and I
<laughs> okay, so what are these? Over there, are those like the uh, the cards, the YouTube cards, and do you have to have an X amount of subscribers in order to do that? Because I know YouTube's kind of changed things on me. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is one of the most powerful things to keep in mind about YouTube. Um, so the whole YouTube algorithm, what they want is like any other platform, is they want the user to stay on the website as long as possible so they can serve up more ads, right? That's how they make their money. So what you want to do is support YouTube's goals of seeing more and more videos, right? And you also want them to know that when people watch your videos, they go on to watch another one and maybe another one and maybe another one. And the more videos that they watch of yours, the more that YouTube knows it's a good experience for the user. So it's very important to always encourage people at the end to watch a playlist and you can watch a playlist of your own videos. Maybe it's just a playlist of your favorite videos on a certain subject or maybe from your certain creator. So if you're starting off in YouTube and you only got two or three videos, put those in a playlist. Or if you're making a certain video, say on a market update and or you know on a certain community tour, you might want to highlight a couple of businesses and their YouTube channels or something that will be a good experience for the user. And that's why um, whenever we think about building our YouTube channels or our YouTube presence, it's always important to think, what is the goal of YouTube? And so it's good to think about it in a positive way. It's also good to think about it in a negative way. So what's a bad experience um, for YouTube? Well, YouTube recognizes a bad experience as someone who watches your video. After a few seconds, they leave. And then even worse, they leave the entire platform. They go back to Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you really want all your friends to see your YouTube videos and you share your YouTube video links there and your friends want to support you, so they click the link, they go over and they watch a few seconds and they go back to Facebook because they're in Facebook mode. Well, it's probably a bad experience uh, for your YouTube channel. So you always want to kind of consider, consider that. So I'm always thinking about in that video, if you notice, um, we're trying to do something that catches people's interest very early on. Uh, so like, here's what's in it for you, the viewer. Uh, people connect with people. They don't connect with really pretty homes and, and visuals. Uh, they don't want to just watch moving slideshows. Uh, so they connect with people. So it's got to be that first five or six seconds. You got to let them know what's in it for them if they're going to continue to watch. And that first five or six seconds, all you're buying is another 10 or 12 seconds of their time. You're not getting them for the whole three minute video. Right. And so that video there gets watched on average for about 60% of its duration, uh, which means that there are a bunch of people that dip off in the first, you know, 10 or 15 seconds, as is typical with all videos. And then uh, further along, if you make it 30, 40 seconds in, they watch the entire video. And so anyone that makes it to the end, those end cards will get them to watch more videos. And then at very least, I want them to at least subscribe. Because then who I knows? I love that you add that with the family at the end. Yeah. I, it's I such an important that. thing. And you know, you can do it throughout the video. Like a lot of great agents and a lot of great YouTubers will, you know, five seconds into the video or 10 seconds into the video will say, oh, and make sure you stick around to the end because that's when we're going to show you the incredible views from this like back deck or something like that. Or like the weirdest feature that the home has. Like give the audience some reason to stick around. And throughout the video, you can use that kind of language that will encourage people to stick around. Um, and it's also important to not use what's called closing language. So when you got 30 seconds left in your video and you tell everyone, hey, thanks a lot for watching the video. We're really glad you joined this. But then you've still got 20 or 30 seconds left. The viewer hears that as, well, I guess all the value is done for me. I guess I'm just going to get out of here, right? So you keep talking all the way to the end as if like, okay, there's just another hook, another surprise, a little bit more engagement. That's why we do, we're always focused on pattern interrupts. Like that's why we'll use sometimes two or three songs in one video. We'll cut really quickly. We'll edit to the beat. We'll do all these things because people are just inundated with noise continually. And if you can cut through that and get their attention long enough that they're like, oh, that's great. What's that cute little girl going to say next, right? Like that's the whole, that's the whole thing. And so our kids are not um, 
I, I guess like I'm a fairly animated guy at home, so that probably helps my kids. Uh, but like none of us are obviously professional actors, like uh, obviously. Uh, I don't have- know. I think you're going to end up being not only, you know, in real estate, but you're going to end up being a booking agent for your children. Uh, well, yeah, I will say I was pretty impressed with that when when we punched in on Avalon in that one shot. I was like, listen, say this is a great place for a morning hot chocolate. And like as I'm punching in. She's like, it's great for a morning hot chocolate. And it's like, with marshmallows. With marshmallows. Like, Can't oh forget the marshmallows. <laughs> this girl, this is perfect. No, but, that they were, they were great. So are they in a lot of your videos or do you just do different ones? So I, you know, the big thing is, is that it's, everyone wants a strong personal brand, but that everyone gets like a little bit wary about putting the personal in the personal brand. Uh, <laughs> and for me, I, like I'm a dad. I'm not going to, I'm not six one. I don't have a chiseled jawline. You know, I am who I am. <laughs> I, I'm married to an absolutely gorgeous woman and I've got two beautiful kids and I'm super proud of them. I do not care if people think it's dorky or goofy or any of that stuff, because the reality is, is that everyone, everyone that I get to know, no matter what I thought of them from afar, or if I only ever met them on social media, what any other human being, if I get to know you like three or four minutes one-on-one, I probably kind of fall in love just a little bit. Like I, I'm like, you know what? I, this person is cool. Oh, that's their story. Oh, that's where they come from. Oh, that's their perspective. You know, I, you, we love other human beings, right? Like we care about other human beings, but only once we know them. And so I wanted my audience to know me. I wanted them to know who they were saying no to when they went with another agent. I wanted them to think of Lachlan and Avalon space when they said, no, I'm going to go with this other person because we know most of the time, like this business, it's a, it can be a coin flip. Like, ah, it's this agent or that agent, but we talked to this guy first. Well, listen, if you want your whole business to be a coin flip, then don't put the personal in your personal brand, you know, just, just be the same as everyone else. Um, Like I had someone reach out to me this morning about marketing and said, Hey, listen, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, do these cold messages out to agents and, you know, offering leads and more appointments and all that stuff. And, uh, but you know, we're helping a lot of agents in your area and I'm like, stop it. Just stop it. Here's what you should do. What you should do is cut the hundred calls down that you're reaching out to down to 10. Like go look at that person's Facebook page or their Instagram profile, look at something and pick one tip that you think that they could be doing better to create a stronger brand, send them a personal video or a bomb bomb and say, Hey, Hey Brad, you know, I was checking out your Instagram, man. That stuff is awesome. You know what you should do though? This has worked for some of my other clients. You should check out trying to do this. Anyways, have an awesome day. Uh, all the best, right? Uh, keep, keep doing your thing, right? Something like that where it's like, oh, okay, this guy stopped. He under, he heard me. He cared enough to send a personal video message and shared a little bit of value and then he dipped away that keeps I, that caught my interest right now i want to talk to him but too many people want to do the exact same thing and then just hope that there's something in the script that will really make them stand out and unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't work that way like you know we don't connect with with that kind of language what we connect with are people other human beings like staring us in the face, looking at our eyes and, you know, saying hello, telling us that they care, telling us something about themselves, connecting like that is the whole thing. Jeremy's cracking me up here. Oh, is it Blanton? Yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Jeremy, I would start with a little just for men to, uh, to begin with. I've seen some of your recent uh, vids. (laughs) Uh, and maybe a toupee, and then I think you're gonna be okay. It's so funny. Um, yeah, and I, I know, like, as far as giving the value, and I know, even you know, on the recruiting side, I would always, before meeting with anybody, completely do my research. Of you course. know, are they a listing agent, a buyer's agent? Then I go onto their social, and and the same thing. So here's what I can do to help, or here's different tips, and you should, you know, maybe you could try to do that, and. Because, right, it's like, I don't want to just say the same thing to everybody. Everybody needs, has different needs and wants. Um, so hitting that. Yeah. Uh, well, I do I like think... gray hair. Gray hair is so <laughs> sexy. <laughs> hey, I'm, I, got, I got some. It's starting to come in on the side here. It's definitely starting to come in. Well, you know what, though? Um, I, but that's what I would just encourage everyone. Like when, if, 
if this audience is familiar with Bob Tompkins, if you're familiar with like a Matt Leonetti, um, if you're familiar with like a Dan Lee out of Australia, there's a bunch of different video creators out there that are just 100% themselves in their audience. And you know that means it's going to repel some people. Some people are going to be like, that. that is not what a professional agent should look like. That's not how a professional agent should talk. That's not how a professional agent should look or act or behave. And the reality is, is there's no such thing as a professional agent. There is a corporate there's a corporate person. There's that guy who's like always uh, like always locked in, dialed in, and that's going to attract some people. Some people want that. But the reality is, is that if you want someone who you've worked with for, you know, three or four weekends, you went out and showed them homes to be 100% your team, no matter what, even the weekend that you can't get out and show them homes, you didn't, you didn't just lose them because of that you want, you need to have a relationship with them. Because you wouldn't do that to your friend, like hang out a few times and like, hey, want to grab wings and, and a beer on Thursday night? And you're like, ah, oh, I can't make it. And you're like, you know what? Looking for a new friend now. It's like, that's not the way that works, right? And and so we always talk about this being a relationship business and uh, friends make mistakes and friends aren't always available. And, uh, you know, that it's a two-way street. And, and if you can create some sort of relationship with your audience before you even meet them, they just have such a deeper connection by the time you actually do get a chance to meet them that at that point in time, they forgive the very human aspects of every uh, that that make you you like they, you know, they will forgive the time that you're two minutes late for a showing presentation, even if you never should be right. They forgive those things because they get it. They know who you are. They know what you got going on. You forgive them. Right. Like we, we often will do that as as agents. Like imagine that like the, the client is 100 percent infallible. And we're so apologetic because we're so fearful that we might lose this thing because the reality is, is that we're fearful because that we didn't yet provide them enough value. That's, that's what we're fearful about is that they've got more to give us than we've got to, uh, we've got more to lose than they've given us. So that's, we need to switch that around to where they feel like, oh my gosh, this is a, this is a privilege to work with these people. And it should be us. We work super hard. We're on call. We dip away from family dinners to take phone calls. We're up late at night answering emails and texts. I don't care what the general public thinks about agents. They might think that we all get paid too much. They might think that we all do too little for that. They might think we're all the same. And that is what the public thinks. So the more that we can kind of create that 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 strong brand, that connection with our audience, the better we'll be able to defend against the Zillow's, uh, the Amazon brokerage that's coming. The way this industry will change, we'll be able to defend against that when people actually know who we are. Because I can I can defend against the Amazon brokerage far stronger uh, than I can against Bob Tompkins if I'm going up against the same listing. Because it's like, are you? Is Bob your guy? Is that who you connect with? Right? Like <laughs> it's it, that it, human it, connection. And I think exactly. And I think especially after this year, people almost want that more than anything. And, and, and really you know how strong that can be. And if you think about it this way, like I, my first few interviews I went on when I met with brokerages, I was like dressed in ill fitting suits and feeling like I needed to talk a certain way and present myself as this, this person that I really wasn't. Um, but you know, I'm now known as a luxury agent in my market and I drive a $9,500 2009 Volvo XC90. Now I could, I could go buy myself a beautiful ride and drive around it, but I don't care about that stuff. And if I was to care about it, I would only be doing it to impress my clients. And what I'm actually at this point now trying to do is think I would like to go and, you know, hit that, that like, almost that diamond kind of position, you know, like that, that diamond sort of threshold and do it in a $9,900 car to prove to the fact, like to people once and for all, it does not matter what you look like, what you drive, how be yourself. The more you, you can be, that's the unlock. That's the secret to connecting with people, building stronger relationships and people feeling like they know you long before they ever reach out to you. And that's like the authentic approach of, oh. you know, because you attract your people and, and by doing the video is just, I think that makes it so much easier to be able to do it that way. It's just, you're a natural. And a lot of people, they're so afraid to even get started. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I wasn't a natural and I'm still, 
I'm still not. And I still, while I'm talking with you today, <laughs> I'm still notice of, I, I still am conscious of all the ums and the ahs and all the imperfections and all the things that, that's why I like editing because then I don't, I can take all the parts out where I'm finding my words, but Hey, it, you know, it is. <laughs> it you're is editing is. those videos as well. So you obviously you're in them. So mm -hmm. you have like a camera person that's yeah. doing a lot of the shots and then you go through and you're doing that editing process. Yeah. So um, for the first two and a half years, two years, I did all the shooting and editing myself. Um, when COVID hit, uh, I brought on a young videographer. He actually stayed with us for like three to four months uh, during COVID because he was living with like 80 year old grandparents and just did not want to take the risk. Right. So he had to stay with us. Um, and for like three months, he sat beside me and just learned. He didn't edit anything. And I was, I liked having someone there because he truly had a passion for creating great videos and content as well. And now, now him and I are extensions of each other. We bounce ideas off of each other. Um, he's helped me take my content uh, to, to new levels this year. And just the sheer workload, like we have, this is a ridiculous number. Um, but the amount of business that's came, we've got probably 80 to $100 million in listings coming to the market in the next 12 to 15 months, 10 million of which is just coming in the next four weeks. And that's all business that has reached out and called us based on our Instagram or YouTube. And there, it's developers saying we've got a 42 unit townhome complex. It's uh, I've got a 10 unit, uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar each comp. That's seven and a half. We've got a luxury penthouse tower that called us up with forty million dollars worth of real estate inside of it. Now, none of that is to suggest like we don't deserve all of that. Uh, that's and and what we've done is just made kind of cool videos and great marketing and stuff. But that none of that is to suggest that like that what we've done is so revolutionary. The idea is just really simply. Take the product that you're selling, display it better than anyone else, make it more attractive than anyone else, attach energy and emotion to that product and have someone feel something about it before they ever book the showing. That was the goal. And as we've done that, other businesses and, and developers and, biz and architects and things like that, they're the ones who now see that and think we could use Brad for our goals. And that's really the key right? Is what's in it for them if they work with us. And so if they're asking, if we can answer that question better than everyone else in our marketplace, then we're going to win. And that's what these developers are seeing now is, hey, what's in it for us if we work with Brad? Well, he can do pre-marketing for us. He can get some hype for us. He's got a good size audience for us. He can make our products look better than the guy who's also building a fourplex down the street, right? So they're seeing this as something that, we, that can help them meet their goals. And that's the difference because now I'm not selling myself against another agent. I'm selling myself as a marketer, their PR guy, and their realtor. So I'm offering all these other value-added services that help build their businesses and help celebrate who they are and what they do. And that is where the value starts to add. And in my mind, um, it doesn't have to be video. And so many of us agents, we do this in, in some way or another. We have this thing that brings more value to our clients. And, and so for, for me, I use it as video in order to you know, help my, with my selling, um, to sell my listings. But uh, it, it doesn't have to be video. As long as you have something where people can say, this is what's in it for me if I work with you know, this person. Um, but Jeremy asked a question on there because I said it at R4. And I didn't at the time think it was a... It was, uh, I, I like this one. <clears throat> so at R4 last year, I stood up and I had, I think, 750 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And my channel was being watched for eight hours a day. And so when I sit up there, I said, hey, listen, you guys, the cool thing about building a business like this, about building a business built on attraction, is that for eight hours of every day, one in every three minutes, while I'm here, while I'm asleep, while I'm with clients, while I'm homesick, while I'm in the mountains with my family hiking, while I'm doing all those things, my audience is consuming my content. My audience is opting in. They're, they're cold calling and door knocking me because they're pressing play, right? And that's a big difference, right? And, and I said, so my goal was by the end of 2021 or 2020 um, to hit 
uh, 24 hours a day, knowing that every minute of every day, someone was watching my stuff. So I vastly underestimated that. I have, uh, on any given day, about 100 hours of watch time. So I have four minutes. So I'll be on here for an hour today and we'll have four hours of our content on our YouTube page consumed. And cause you almost have, I mean, you have like 5,000 subscribers. Yeah, we went from, from 750 to nearly 5,000 subscribers and I'll hit 5,000 probably by the 6th of February. And it, what's amazing about it is like, I don't go viral. We, our content has never went viral. Um, even though we've made some fun stuff, uh, it, it, we just haven't, but I actually don't mind because it's very chartable. We can, we can release our three to four videos a month. Our channel grows by 20% a month. And boy, if you could compound interest, your business by 20%, your leads by 20% every month, that 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year at that 20% growth rate, that could be 22, 23,000 subscribers that 10 to 15 leads a week could easily be 75 to 80 leads a week. It will be. Um, so there is, it's, it's, ab it's just, it's kind of unfathomable, right? Because you don't, this is a business where you don't actually, you know, build yourself up to a certain level. And then that, that plateaus. Um, if you can find something that works in your market, there is, it's actually like, like the growth trajectory can be so it can arc so entirely high that I like as as it as more and more people know what we do, um, the potential to list 250 homes in a year is there. I don't have the bandwidth or the capacity or the time or the interest to even do that. Like I've got a family. <laughs> that's that's why I work. Family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but it's it's there, and that's what what's so cool about this is that you don't have to do exactly what. I did uh, to get those kind of benefits. A lot of agents are having a lot of success on YouTube, just making content about moving to that city. What are the cost of living in that city? Pros and cons of living in that city. The five things I wish I knew before I moved to this city, like any of those kind of topics. That's what people are searching for. And that's a great place to start because you don't have to be a fancy camera guy. Yeah, you don't have to know fancy editing. You can just get there and share something of value with people. And I think the value and having the content and I mean, all of that, it just helps build that up. I mean, I know you can make a YouTube channel kind of look nice with other videos. So I know when I'm setting up like an agent who doesn't do video, I can, you know, that's trying to or whatnot. When we mm -hmm. set up a YouTube channel, we go over to Remax and, you know, they have all the national housing. They have all the fit to sell, the own it. They have all these different playlists and videos and we just add that to ours. So it, yeah. at least a, it's not an empty screen. There's something there. Yes. That makes them feel better. And then they can start to add their own content. I mean, I love your videos because they're very lifestyle, very real, genuine. It's different than when people have the photographers that go in. And yes, it is a moving, but there's nobody in it. And yeah. that's where there's such a big difference. I've always loved that lifestyle. So yes, that was a listing video. But you don't even realize that it's, a, I mean, you're, it's a lifestyle. Your kids are basically showing off the cool things that you can do. And I love the lifestyle more than anything, than yeah. just the regular. It's well, different. I'll show you, I think you should play um, this uh, video that we did very recently, which I think is, is we try to do three or four a year, at least if I had my way, I would do uh, 20 of them. But what I really like is I want, I want to do things that, people in my marketplace are like, wait, what? He hired a local jazz singer. He <laughs> recorded the track separately with that jazz singer. He then had her like sing her way through a home tour. Like what is, go like, I, I want them to do, think of this as something so crazy. Like he hired a ballerina. She danced through the house. <laughs> like, well, like I want this kind of attention for my business because if I want my sphere of influence to grow, I need to do something that is noteworthy or exemplary, right? It has to be something that gets people talking. And so that's why we do stuff like this. I mean, I'm, I love creative arts. I love the arts. I love music. So we saw this girl on Instagram uh, when we were searching a hashtag for a certain community that we were listing a property in. 
and I heard her voice. She was just singing in the bathroom and I was like, oh my gosh, this girl's in insane. So I look at her Instagram profile and I see here she sings at a lot of local jazz clubs. And I show my wife and my wife is like, oh yeah, that'd be really cool if she was like singing in one of your home tours. And I was like, yeah, for like no doubt, absolutely. So uh, I reach out to her. I'm like, hey, would you be interested in like, I would love to showcase your voice and like a local talent in a really cool special home and create something neat. And then I sent some examples of some really creative Tim Smith videos out of California. And I said, hey, like, I love what this guy does. I'd love to do something with you. And she's like, I, this would be amazing for me, right? And then, of course, COVID hits. And so we knew we needed the perfect house. And then as the months dragged on, you know, performing artists aren't, they don't have a stage to actually get up on. And we thought, how cool is this? We can like actually provide a stage for her. We can support local um, artists and we can kind of pull off this sort of creative dream that I've had. And it was probably one of the hardest videos we made. We had tons of issues with it, but we, cause we'd created a couple of pieces for this house that the main piece that we created was this tour on this one, like, you know, $2.7 million home. Uh, it was on YouTube. I got a call. The, the people saw it a couple of weeks ago. And then they, they went home and they said, we're going to think about it. We might actually write an offer. We're going to think about it. I sent over the video of the singer before I actually released it publicly. And then I just said, hey, and the, the name of the song that she sings in is, is Let's Fall in Love. They messaged me back, Brad, we fell in love. We'd like to write an offer. And it sold the house. It helped them connect on a deeper level. So anyways, if you want to show the video, it's cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. Let's do this. That's so cool. That's yes. so cool. And, and to know that that was a local artist that you were even helping out with COVID, because you're right. I mean, everything kind of closed. So that mm -hmm. made that video even, you know, just knowing that back story part of it, that makes that even more special. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it it was a it was an important thing for us to to try to do something that, uh, you know, like, I think as agents, we always, we think of giving back and we've got like, of course, we've got the miracle network. We've got so many great things, but I will say if there's something you're passionate about, some cause that you're personally passionate about, it's like, it, that is, that's where your best work will probably be done. Uh, that's, you know, and I just, I think of the, like, if we come out of this post pandemic world 
and, and we go back and it's like the small coffee shops are, are done. And, you know, the guy that, that busks and plays in, in the coffee house and, you know, the, all these people, like, it's just the people that are, that like lay their souls on the line and share their art with the world. Like that is what makes like life worth living, right? Like the whole tapestry of it all. That's what drives me. And I'm like, if we can support as many of those people so we can kind of come back stronger, uh, like that that's the goal. And those are unfortunately the people that have been hurt, I think the most during this pandemic. Yeah. So I always, I got all these different comments. One's like how yeah. much in production you do. Um, some just trying to come up with different creative ideas when they have that lower price point. Sure. So, I, you know, I can say Tracy, uh, so we do sell some properties that have, uh, you know, like lower price tags in our market that are considered entry level. Um, I look at all of our videos as an opportunity to tell a story. So it's always based around if the home isn't the story, then maybe the past owner, maybe the home is really quirky. So the past owner is the story. Um, if the uh, new avatar of the person that's going to be moving into that house, maybe that's the story. Uh, maybe if the home's not that special, maybe it's the community that's the story. And then if none of that rings true, then maybe we tell a story. Maybe we tell a story about investors or, you know, uh, some other um, little storyline to go along along with it. But there's almost always something if you can find it, right? It's, it's just kind of like this right now. Like the agents that are succeeding right now are not focused on all the challenges they're facing. They're focused on the few things that are within their control and they're executing on that stuff. And those agents are like, oh my gosh, things are... I can't believe how much business I have. You know, I can't believe how well I'm doing. And it's just because, yeah, like you're just spending 99% of your time within this world of things that you can control, right? So that's that's why I don't worry about things like politics and all the other stuff because I'm just like, no, I, I, I'm not going to make a difference. So I'm just going to go do the thing that I do really well and I'm just going to focus on that. And And I think that's why even like with Bob Tompkins and I and the Bob and Brad show, uh, that's why we started that is we thought, okay, um, the world's changing. There's like lockdowns, there's masks, there's uh, people are scared. Who knows what the future is going to hold? I mean, obviously we saw, it, you know, it did amazing things for the housing market, but none of us really knew rather than being afraid, we just leaned on our network. Uh, and that's exactly even how this show, when we started doing that, it, you know, what can we do? And I, we got to get mm -hmm. rid of action let's keep our focus and if people are locked down at least you know if we can give back and give value yeah. and train and show people all these different cool, cool tools that they could be using and that's pretty much how you know we started doing this and then my broker and I started doing a podcast live cast I don't know what you call it yeah. um, you know on Monday mornings I mean and without I mean it's been on our to-do list for over two years but you yeah. know, never getting the courage or finding the right platform. There's always an excuse. But then when COVID hit, it's like, we're going to make this happen and let's do it. Because it for me, it was just giving me something else to focus on. Absolutely. All of that noise and a way yep. to kind of give back. Um, with Tracy, what she was saying, um, I'd love to play this other video about sure. your investment. Because I thought that almost was like a perfect kind of lead into this. Um, yeah. And that's really what this was a home that we struggled on. We're like, oh, what's the story here? And I was like, who, well, who's going to buy it? Who would? And then, yeah, this is what we came up with. All right. So pl this was really fun. I love this. Hospital and just a short commute downtown. 
Then there's the house itself. Is it renovated? Are there areas of the home that you can unlock further potential and add more value to that property? What about things like an income suite in the basement? Something that's going to help pay that mortgage every month, you know, cash flow. And of course, there's the price. The savvy investor is looking for all of those things when choosing a great investment property. So let's take, for example, 5936 Dow Castle Drive, Northwest. And over 1,400 square feet with three bedrooms and two bathrooms upstairs, plus a one bedroom, one bath, $1,000 a month income generating suite in the basement, this place is a perfect investment. Let me take you through it and show you why. Up on this main floor here, you're going to get this front living room area, a little family room area, plus this really cozy area in the back with this beautiful brick feature wall and that accent timber mantle above a natural wood burning fireplace. Those kind of details, they have a lot of character to a home. It's what people are looking for when they're looking into these older communities. But it also has that square footage that you actually need to get a great return on your investment. So as I mentioned, unrealized potential is one of those areas an investor can unlock more value and equity in a home. At this property, it's this kitchen space. It's completely movie ready. You can use it exactly how it stands. But if you wanted to put a little bit more money into this property, maybe knock down that wall, you could open this up and put in an island. So off the main entrance and down the main hallway, you've got three more bedrooms. These two bedrooms right here, they're both nice and large, and they've got big windows looking out onto the street. It's great for the kids. Lots of natural sunlight. And master bedroom. That larger square footage that this home enjoys gives you things like this dual closet and one of the cutest little en suites I've ever seen. Not something you're going to find in most bungalows in the community. So, one of the things so attractive about getting into the property market is having someone else pay off your mortgage. And you can do that right here. Check out this cool one bedroom suite. Now, my client had this rented out for over $1,000 in the past. We had a great little kitchen back here, a bedroom with a legal egress window, and a full bathroom. Down a shower, blue toilet, and access to the laundry space. And then there's this space in here. You can turn it into a gym, a home theater, maybe even a home office. Look, it can be tempting to just buy the cheapest home in the best community. But that would be a mistake, especially if that home is on a busy street. Busy streets put a cap on future resale value. Now take a look at a street like this, Dow Castle Drive. It's quiet, it's safe for families, and these large lots provide privacy and plenty of places for kids to play. These are the things that families and investors are looking for when making a great decision. So whether you're someone looking to build equity for your family, or possibly even a portfolio of income generating properties, maybe you want to try your hand at your very first look. All of that begins making a wise real estate investment. 5936 is moving ready, it's income generating ready, and lots of the home is already renovated. So if you're looking for a true opportunity in Calgary's Northwest, in a great community, just give Bradley Hill, me, with Remax first, and call, text, or email, I'd be happy to send you off the show. So for more real estate advice, tips, I almost backed off the, the back stair there. I was so worried I was going to fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. And I love all the cars. So now I have to figure out how to do that. I like <laughs> that because it wasn't um, just about selling the home. You're giving all these valuable tips for, and, and almost like getting someone's thought process on investing. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, you almost talk me into wanting to do that real estate investment. So I really, that resonated me uh, just because it got, you know, your wheels turning on becoming just an investor. It's like, oh yeah, but this is a house that he's selling. It's, it's like, you almost forget. Well, I, I think that is the goal, right? Is once like for me, once I started doing videos, I realized I'm like, okay, yeah, that helps sell the house. And then, oh, someone else saw that I did that video. Now they'd like me to sell their house. So there's, okay, there's some extra value there. Um, now what's really exciting is, is you realize just how one of these pieces of content can attract people from all over the internet, like everywhere. And it starts to have build this, like, you know, this, you start to build this portfolio of different stories that you've told, different pieces that you've made, something that always has more value that it's really kind of hard. Like, 
I want to sell that house, but I also want to sell 15 more, right? So what's the way to do that? Like I can't, I've had lots, I made videos in the beginning where it was just about selling the house and, and people are like, oh, it's too bad that one's gone. And it, it's so weird, right? You think the audience is more sophisticated. They're going to watch that and be like, but if I also want to get another one like that, I could probably just call Brad. Well, people aren't, they actually need to be told because when we're viewers, we're somewhat passive, right? We're taking our directions. We're taking our cues from what we're seeing on the screen. So that's why it works. That's why call to actions work. Hey, don't forget to subscribe is like, oh yeah, that's great. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, don't forget to do this or don't forget. It's like, it becomes things that people are like, okay, that's what I should do. And that home, that one video there, even though the home itself wasn't wow, it generated more business for us. It started having people look at us as being like, oh, Brad doesn't just work with sellers. He can also help investors find great, great properties as well. He ha has an understanding of this. So there's these ways that I don't have to go out and tell people like, listen, I'm an expert investor in property or anything like that, or I'm number one, or I'm the best local area. I don't have to say any of that stuff. I can just go out there and I can talk about this stuff, present it professionally. And then people are like, oh, he, that guy, he must be the authority on it. Like he must, he must know he's the guy I should talk to. Right. And so that's, that's where the value is. I mean, and you have so many videos, so I thought it was quite cool because I've never tried to do that. So on your Instagram, when it has, you have like a little link there and it takes mm -hmm. you to the subscribe page, I guess, if I'm not already subscribed on YouTube, like yeah. I've never seen that pop up. I mean, I know I've set up my YouTube channel. So if there are subscriber versus, you know, yeah. the different videos for the whatever featured videos, mm -hmm. but I've never seen it where it's almost like a pop up to subscribe, but I guess it's just a little code in the tail kind of thing. Yeah. So all, all it is, is, um, while you're uploading your video, um, there'll be a section there that says end cards. And so when you click on your end cards, it'll give you an option of, do you want to have a playlist? You can make it, it doesn't have to be a playlist. It could just be one other video because you know, like, let's say that I had a follow-up video to, to that one and the video was, um, you know, five tips. Uh, you know, five renovation tips or something, you know, five cheap renovations that give you 5x return on your money, something like that. So if I had that video, I could just simply say at the end of it, hey, and check out this for more tips on how you can make more money when you're flipping properties in the Calgary real estate market. I, it could just be one video that I'm pointing to over there. Um, so really whatever you want them to do, I want them to stay on the platform. I want them to watch more I like videos. The playlist and I like, I like giving them an option because you never know what video pops up after yours. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what I, because my channel is, you know, quote unquote monetized now, like people, like ads play before it, which really blows my mind. Cause these are essentially ads anyways. It's like watching an ad so you can watch an ad. <laughs> like it's so, so funny. Um, but people will actually like if you watch a playlist, they can just let it play. Like, right. That, that's the great thing about it. It's like they watch the one video and then it goes on to the next video. And the amount of people like people think like it's all kids on there just watching it um, or that it all must not be like their ideal client is. But the reality is, is YouTube's finding the algorithm like YouTube's constantly we're finding your audience through the use of the algorithm. So my content. I will talk to people who are, you know, seven figure spenders and they will say, oh yeah, we like sat down in our living room last night and we watched an hour and a half of you and your family's videos. Like we watched like 60 videos last night and I'm like, okay, that's amazing. But it, <laughs> I don't know, that would kind of freak me out a little bit. Too. I know it's so, it's so nuts, but I tell you what, when, if they're going to spend a couple million bucks, I'm like, please, please do. Right. But, but after that, if you think about that, I, I could never be so self-serving in a meeting as to talk about myself for 60 minutes, just, you know, but if they're going to consume the content and in each one of those videos, they're seeing who we are, what we do for our clients. Um, they're drawing their own conclusions and they're seeing the energy and the excitement and the smiles and the joy that we're trying to bring uh, in our, in our videos that that's that by the time they actually meet me, I just have it's to already, they already know you. They already sure. know me. And I have to just like not sell myself, just like solve their problem. What is their problem? Are they looking to sell? Are they right. looking to buy? That's it. Like we just can focus on that because I don't have to talk about myself anymore. Because they'll they'll do it for you.
you know, and that's kind of the, the goal. That's <laughs> you want this them to so be so awesome. And I love all your videos and I could probably watch hours and hours and hours, Don't. but <laughs> I want to thank you for doing this. I want everyone to go follow Brad on Instagram. You have some really fun reels and, and different videos and how you're able to kind of, yes, have it over on YouTube, but I like how you're able to kind of add that yeah. over to the Instagram space. So go there. There's a link to his YouTube. Go subscribe, watch the videos, get inspired. And Brad, thank you so much for being our first guest in our video series for the month of February. Couldn't think of a better person because your videos are incredible and just mind blowing in themselves. So. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. I really, really appreciate this opportunity. I see you've got Melanie Galea coming up later. Yes. In the month, right? oh my God. And I love her like the live videos and, and stuff like that. So we're, I'm a huge Melanie Galea fan. I love, and I, I, I like to call her Mel because she does not like to be called Mel. Um, oh, and she's just so that. spicy. Just, she's just the best. But if you notice what we're doing here right now is what we're doing is sending out a hook, just a call. This is a call to action to come back next week and not watch the entire month of February series of video content creators here on the channel. Yes. And I'll get some tips from you on different show things. Hey, hey. you guys. Are awesome. so thank, you, thank you so much. Uh, it was a joy to be a part of this. Thank you. Bye, All guys. Yeah.